Hello guys, welcome to the ninth episode of Conquest League Ranked, and today's episode is going to be quite special, where I'm going to be playing Aphrodite. This last uh, guy, K3 Demo, is going to trade me his Aphrodite pick, and we're going to have some fun in the solo lane today, ladies and gentlemen. Aphrodite is quite good in the solo lane because of her sustain, and it's very difficult to kill her because of her ultimate from the jungle gank. So you can get away with a lot of aggressive plays in the solo lane with Aphrodite, and still be safe from the jungle ganks and stuff like that. So, if they have a Fenrir jungle, which it looks like it will be Fenrir in the jungle, then uh, every time he comes around and bites me, I'm just gonna OT out of it and I'll be good. I'll be safe. I'll be good to go. I'm gonna build a quite aggressive start opening. If you guys saw my last game with Jean Kui, uh, I believe my last game was with Jean Kui, where I went pretty aggressive opening. I'm going to do a very similar aggressive opening because Aphrodite has really good sustain throughout the laning phase and what I want to do, my goal is to basically try to force the jungler to pay attention to me in the laning phase to alleviate pressure away from middle and do a lane. And if he keeps trying to gank me then and if I keep getting out then that's a huge win for our team in itself. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be facing Jean Kui or Kronos yet in the solo lane. Uh, if it's against Kronos, I'll have a very easy time. If it's against Jean Kui, it's going to be a little bit more tricky because of the fact that he does have sustain also. And um, Kronos doesn't have the sustain necessary to keep up with Aphrodite, so that's basically why it would be a very lopsided matchup if it is Kronos in the solo lane. So what I'm going to open up here is Vampiric Shroud, and I'm going to the Doom Orb 1, which I believe is called Talisman, or something Talisman. I'm not familiar with the items quite yet. So, um, or Lost Artifact, there we go. I was thinking of something else, I guess. This one I was thinking of, the Tiny Trinket, which leads up to the Bancroft's Talon. But here, I'm basically going to go that, and... Um, I'm gonna get one potion of each just in case. And this is a pretty safe opening for me because number one, most importantly, the only reason why I went Aphrodite in the situation is because I started off in the left side lane. And the reason why I know that I'm starting off on the left side lane is when you're doing picks and bands, if your first pick, your solo lane, your short lane rather, is gonna be on the right hand side and your dual lane will be on the left hand side. But if your second pick, then your short lane is going to be on the left hand side and dual lane or longer lane is going to be on the right hand side. Now, if you're asking yourself why is left lane safer? Well, the answer is because the junglers, when you do speed and blue, you get to the lane slightly quicker than when middle and solo laner does mid heartbeat camps while the jungler does red and then the solo laner and jungler will meet each other at the enemy blue and get to lane. So we're going to be there quicker than they will be. Nine out of ten times. And that's basically it. And speed buff is priority for junglers, so after they get the speed buff, they're going to think to themselves, well, where can I go? Can I go in the mid? Or can I go into the solo lane? And most people, depending on the matchup, will go in the solo lane sometimes. So I'm going to tank this for a little bit here. I'm going to reset this to him. Just going to spot here. And now we're going to have a really strong 2v2 matchup. And it looks like it's going to be Kronos. Which is a very favorable matchup for me. I don't want to get stunned here by the Fenrir while they have the creeps there also. That's unfortunate. If I caught him there with a the stun. Enemy missing left. Careful, middle, careful, middle, careful, middle. 
So right now I'm calling that defender might gank him, and yeah, he is. Right there. Good job to disengage that. So I accidentally used a health potion there. I didn't mean to use it. When I was calling that enemy's missing left, and to be careful middle, I accidentally pressed it a little too quickly. So there's nothing really that this guy can do here in terms of being able to clear the wave he's gonna be forced to lose a little bit of golden experience there's not much he can do about that so he's trying to trade with me but what he doesn't realize is that i'm gonna be able to sustain here better than he will that's interesting Slow. If I can catch him here with a stun combo, then he's going to take a significant amount of damage here. I'm going to get my level 3 heal here, just to heal a little bit more efficiently, and um, the reason why he even managed to do so much damage to me was because when I used my birds on him, the whole archer wave, his whole archer wave was basically hitting me and doing an obnoxious amount of damage to me. And that's basically what it comes down to. So it was very risky for me not to get my ultimate there, because if the Fenrir did gank me... Wow, that's unfortunate. If the Fenrir did gank me, I would be in se severe trouble there. So right now I'm denying him a lot of golden experience. He's gonna be able to clear this wave pretty efficiently here. Just because when the minion wave separates like that, in that regard, it's very easy for a lot of solo laners to clear the wave. If they have such a small area of effect spell. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, he got a kill. Well, my tower got a kill. So right there, like I said, it's very easy for Aphrodite to survive a gank. Very easily. The Kronos didn't commit to that kill either, which was very silly for him not to commit there. He should have definitely committed. So it looks like Tier wants to gank him. Oh, I missed that up. He pushed him so far back that I mistimed it. Nice kill. Good job. Nice job. First so right there, I messed up. <laughs> so did Tyr though. Tyr blinked a little too far. That's most unfortunate. I did not have the mana at the time. Mana just came up there. So right now, now I'm gonna get beats, just in case my ultimate is gonna be down for whatever reason. And uh, I'm gonna get... Actually, the duration increases by 0.3 seconds. Cooldown also gets reduced by 5 seconds. So it might be worth maxing this out as it comes up. But I'm going to get my second skill here. So he got teleported to tower. So he has no beads, so which means he's going to be very vulnerable in teamfights mid to late game. Not having beads in these late teamfights is no bueno. Looks like Kronos might be doing blue, or picking up blue, that the Fenrir left for him. We're gonna take a peek. He does have Hog, yeah. So he cleared it with a Hog, unfortunately. So I'm gonna go around this way. Your left 
Incoming middle. Can we get that cut this? Or not, I guess. I don't want to take too much poke there. Oh, God, thank goodness. I'm playing really inefficiently right now. There we go. No, okay, he doesn't want it. He doesn't want to accept my love for what it is. So this is my first time playing Aphrodite in like a very long time. So I'm getting used to a lot of her mechanics basically. I'm gonna push this tower while I have the opportunity to do so. And now I'm gonna go pick up that blue. I could have played that situation a lot better with a tier. Doesn't seem like we have the burst to take him out quite yet. So right now my goal will be to try to poke him out of the lane. An ally has been slain. Back off. As you can see, he doesn't have the sustain necessary to keep up with me here. So once I do this one more time, he's gonna have to burn his ulti, basically. And I'm not afraid of Fenrir because I have my ulti up and I have my... Enemies. Incoming middle. Out of Be right back. I'm gonna see if I can force this ulti here. Enemies Should be a kill. Yeah it is. <laughs> I basically threw out a random dove bird there, hoping he would run into it, and luckily he did. And now Wukong's gonna cover for him. He actually might be dead here. Hello. An ally has been All right. slain. Okay. Never mind. Bum bum ba dum ba dum bum bum ba dum bum 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 bum. That's unfortunate. All right, now I'm gonna back here. I'm gonna go get the cooldown boots here. Tier three beads to boot. And the. Uh, he built Telekinesis Ring to try to be hybrid with the magical protection, the magical power, the attack speed, and the basic attack that does extra damage. But I don't think this is a very good item on Kronos, or actually anyone for that matter, because the passive doesn't really help that much. Because if you get a one strong magical power item, it's going to do more than this and the passive combined, basically. So he can't, as you can see, my full 3-2 combo did about 60, like 50 to 60% of his health. So if he comes closer, we'll basically kill him. Enemy missing metal. Where are you? That's a kill. You have slain an enemy. Right there, caught him off guard. Caught him slipping. Caught him slipping. Right. And this guy looks like he's going to try to... Now we should be able to get this tower here with uh what's his face being dead, Kronos being dead. Not really worried. Okay. Oh, that's unfortunate. Your team has destroyed a left enemy tower. 
So right now I'm gonna see if I can extend my advantage by zoning out golden experience for this Kronos. He's really far behind right now. He's four levels under me. I'm just gonna last hit here and deny him a lot of golden experience. It's kind of it's gonna hurt my team, but this is a different way of slightly, slowly but surely extending your advantage in the solo lane. Okay, I'm gonna help them. This is. That seems kind of crumbling apart there. Be careful, left. Leave me alone. On my way. That's unfortunate. Should be a kill. There we go. Now we can get mid tower here. What the? Okay. Your right tower is under attack. Ah shit! My things on cooldown. Retreat middle. So we did good there, we got two kills, gonna extend some advantages. Be right back. And uh and we're gonna get right tower, Neath is coming. It's just Neath though, so it's not too bad. I'm gonna go get blue buff on left here. There's a big way for this Kronos to pick up here. And uh, I'm gonna get some more magical defense. I'm gonna get a vo the Aura Void Stone here, so I can survive against the Jean Kui ultimate. I'm not really afraid of the Chronos damage, but I am afraid of the Jean Kui at the moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that right now. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a ward here also. Always important, like I said in a previous video, to if you have extra change, to always pick up a ward or two. Enemy missing right. And if you know that they're warding your blue and they're playing extremely passive during the early laning phase and your jungle is looking for an opportunity to gank, then you might want to Enemy purchase a sentry ward. Has been slain. Okay, let me see if I can uh, assist them, these fine gentlemen. Let's see if I can uh, assist these fine gentlemen. Alright, so the Jean, not the Jean, the Amusing Cobb is calling that Neath is charging the ultimate there. So every night are, as you can see, pretty good transition into the solo lane. As long as you can hit your stuns. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and ward the red here, just in case, just to spot out here. Okay, looks like. Yeah, I think they know that I'm here. I think they know, guys. That's too bad. Yeah, they know. They have a ward over here. An ally has been slain. So I got the two little minis. Small little victory there. Taking away that gold and experience for them. Bum, bum, 
So as you can see, I'm distracting them quite a lot there, and it allows the Guan Yu to put pressure on right there, which was really good of him. They still got the blue, but that's fine. I'm really confident that I'm not going to die in a lot of situations. And he's dead. <laughs> that was a really good gank there by Tyr. Like, really solid. And I'm just gonna keep putting pressure here, make somebody rotate over. That's one way of extending your advantage. We don't really have a creep wave, a big creep wave here. Could get a little bit of tower poke here. Yeah, I see you. See if that man. Get out of here. Enemy, enemy, what the? Okay. So as you can see, I'm putting a lot of pressure here, and we got right tower because of it, which is really good. Our 2v2 beats their 2v2. Right. Gotta be careful. No, you got hit by it. Listen, Cobb, why you died though? Alright, we need to get out and start helping them out. Because they're like, they're taking advantage of us by doing small skirmishes elsewhere and taking advantage. Ah, he went that way. Alright. So I have a lot of, a decent amount of gold here. I feel like I should just stick with them. Be right back. Be careful. Man, I do a lot of damage. Be right this Kronos is nice really job. under level. And see, the thing about Kronos is he's not that strong in the current meta in the solo lane. He's fairly weak because his early game is very exploitable, as you can see from the earlier stages of the game. I'm thinking my next item here should be a physical defense item just to survive against the Fenrir, specifically Fenrir because he has a lot of levels. He's like the highest level on his team along with jean -Cui. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to get Mail of Renewal actually. I've been experimenting with this item a little bit and I'm actually starting to like it a little bit more because of the fact that it gives you health. And the passive is pretty good if you do manage to get an assist nearby. 10% health and 10% mana. That's like 200 health and 150 mana restored. Which could be the difference of life or death in a team fight mid to late game. So right now I'm going to give up my left tower to this chrono so that we can do gold. That's fine. See which way he goes. What the? Alrighty. Moving on up. Moving on up to the side. To a deluxe carpet in the sky. Moving on up. Moving on up to the side. Sorry about that. I should have waited for him to two there. That was my fault. Oh shoot, left lane. Help left lane! Help left lane! Awesome! Run my 
Away. He's gonna be in trouble here, but uh, we should be able to clean this up very easily. Enemy ultimate incoming. We should be dead. We're gonna split up here just to secure this. Mm -hmm. This guy should be dead here. Your middle tower is under attack. An enemy has been slain. Nice job. Oh, he missed that. Oh, okay. I can't hit anything. <laughs> Alright, like it's done. There's two people there. Let's just take our small little victory of left tower and move on. Gonna do left heart beast here in the meantime. I'm gonna do right harpies in the meantime. And uh, my next item is definitely gonna be a huge uh, magic damage item. I'm thinking Rod of Tahuti. I think that should be a good idea. And also, if you guys don't know, the kiss gives you movement speed if you are linked with somebody. I think they're doing it. Okay. Alright, good game. Yeah. Uh, we were controlling the pace of the game really strong. We're up 8,000 gold at that point in time. Kronos is not the strongest solo laner at the moment in the current meta. He gets exploited too easily early game, and he went a very poor active choice between Hog and Teleported Towers. It's a very greedy, selfish opening, which didn't work out in his favor at all. As you can see in the items, Hand of the Gods and Teleport to Towers. So the reason why I say that it's a very greedy and selfish choice on a mage, you have to be able to survive in teamfights mid to late game. So some things to help you survive are Sprint and Beads, Aegis, Blink, and, or Combat Blink. Those are like your top four, right? And uh, a second tier, tier of Sprint is the Heavenly Agility, right? So that's another option you could go to survive. Now. The teleport to towers is basically just to save his tower in the early game, which it basically stalled his tower demolition by maybe two to three minutes, and that's about it. And then from there, mid to late game, he doesn't have beads versus the tier. He doesn't have beads against my stun, the you know, or Aegis for the Zeus detonate, anything like that. And because of that, he paid the ultimate price. And as we're for me, as soon as I backed, I did a greedy opening in the beginning, but then I backed at level 6, and I picked up beats immediately to defend myself against the Fenrir, just in case my ultimate was down for whatever reason, that I would be able to have a secondary option to escape from the Fenrir ultimate. And uh, another thing to note from that game was the tower dive by the Fenrir was pretty well calculated but the only issue was the fact that i was aphrodite and that i could easily ulti out of his ultimate if i was any other god and he bit me with a neath ultimate on top of that and a chronos damage to follow up i'd probably be dead 100 percent of the time so the fender was doing actually really good for his team he was 9-2-1 and one. Uh, his only downfall from what i saw was the early gank on me and uh, i'm starting to actually like aphrodite in the solo lane uh, she's very good sustaining, she can trade poke with enemies very efficiently, and she's very difficult to kill by the jungler. So I think she's starting to become a strong contender in the solo lane, and we might see her in tournaments to come. So anyway guys, I hope you found this video very informative. This is my number 9, I believe, of Smite Conquest League ranked. Be sure to like, favorite, share, and subscribe to my channel if you want to stay tuned for more of my videos, and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Thanks.